Hi, this is Michael from Expanse VR, and in this episode of my first person shooter tutorial series, we're going to be looking at one of the most important things of any first person shooter shooting the gun. We will cover the effects of the gun being fired, like the muzzle flash, and of course, shooting an actual bullet out of our gun. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, click that notification button down below to make sure you are notified whenever I post a new tutorial for you. So our next step is actually to fire our gun. And I couldn't actually really find a particle system that I like that was free on the Unity store. So next episode, I will show you how to make a half decent looking particle system for our bullet. But for the moment, we're just going to use an actual physically looking bullet. So what we're going to do is create a capsule. Yes, that's a very, very big bullet. Rotate it around. Again, holding down the control button to have it go 90 degrees exactly. And using the scale tool, we're just gonna bring it down to about that size there. How does that look? Still a smidge big comparison. So again, we will shrink it up a little bit more. Little bit more. Okay. And what we're going to do in our materials folder is create a new material. Cause bullet material. Um, I'm going to give it an emission. Nice big bright yellowy white. There. And if we just drag that onto our bullet, there we go. And if you've got your post processing in, if you just crank up the bloom, it's not really doing much. Let's crank that up a little bit ourselves. There we go. So we have a bullet. And if we drag that capsule, which we rename to bullet, into our prefabs, we then can delete it. Okay, so jumping back into Visual Studio, we're gonna go into a player combat. So we're going to need to store that newly created bullet. We are also going to need a point where we want it to. Uh, actually, you know, this will be a transform. We need a point where we need the bullet to spawn. And it's not going to make sense just right now, but we're going to need two balls. One is, is armed, which is false at the moment when we first start off and is firing. And all we're gonna do is in our update, we are gonna to check to see if armed, so if we actually have a gun, and if we press left mouse button. And if so, firing will be set to true, and we will fire. So the first step we'll do is we'll actually create how we are going to fire. Actually, no, no. Let's get this whole mouse button part done first because that's nice and simple. So if, now, most people will do on get mouse button down. 
uh, on get mouse button and keep doing this every time we are firing. Actually, no, no, let's actually do it that way first. So get mouse button. So we're gonna use get mouse button down and is armed. So what we're gonna basically do is as we, every time we hit get the mouse button down, is firing will equal true. And in the reverse, in get mouse button up, we'll set this to false. So we just need to do two other small things uh, to set up our gun on our player. So if we go to our player, why isn't the F button working? Oh, there we go. So if we unhide our gun, first thing we need to do is we actually need to create a spawn point for where our bullets will appear. So if we grab our gun, Actually, no, we'll do it this way. For well, this bullet spawn point. Copy the position. Paste the position. And the only reason we do that is to make sure that it's pretty much centered up. There we go. That's pretty much spot on the money. Except for being way off center for some reason. And just to make sure there's no bad interactions when the bullet spawns, we're just going to bring it out ever so slightly. Okay, so that's our bullet spawns point. Bullet spawn point. So the only other part that we need to do now is uh, add the muzzle flash to give that little bit of extra oomph to our shooting. And with that one, again, we're going to use a free asset. This one is the War FX pack from... I don't know if that's Jean or Jean, Jean Moreno, um, JMO, much easier. Again, open it up in Unity, import it in. Here we are going to want everything but the demo. I mean, you can um, import the demo on this one if you want. It actually goes through quite a few different things for you to have a look at and how to use them. Um, I won't be needing it. Yeah, we'll keep the rest of that. I don't think we actually need the mobile. Yeah, we'll just get all that. And once that is done, what we're looking for here, JMO assets, war effects, effects, muzzle flashes. And I think I'm gonna go with this one here. I know this looks a little bit funky in here, but it'll look fine once it's actually on. Yep, we'll go with that one. Um, and we should, if we go to our bullet spawn point and apply it to that once we bring it in. And that should be sitting just in front, if we get rid of the gizmo. That should be fine. What we will do is just double test it. 
So all we need to do in the actual prefab for our muzzle flash is just come down to here where it has a script and remove it because it's actually missing off here and it's going to cause an error. Um, all this script does is actually make it flash for us, but we're going to do this through our own method anyway. So just remove component and that should be fine. So if we push play now, there we go, we got our muzzle flash. With some lighting and everything here. So that works great. So we can jump out of our player prefab now after we save it into the main screen. And we're gonna jump into Visual Studio once again. And in our player combat, we are going to do a couple of instant, uh, a couple of extra steps here now. So first thing we need to do is actually fire our weapon. Actually, before we do that, we will probably need to have a variable for our muzzle flash that we've just added in. And what we're gonna do when we set it to firing is true. We're also set this to true. And once we let go, set it to false. And I just realized we need to let ourselves know once we picked up a weapon that we are in fact armed. Is armed will equal true. Now before we actually fire our bullet off, we'll just test that all that is working. So go into our player again. So I'm going to set this to false. That will be false. In fact, that can actually follow. Let's realize just to make sure, in case there's any interaction, should actually our muzzle flash and our spawn point should actually be attached to our gun just in case. And what we do is our player. We'll have our, where are our prefabs? Might as well do that while we're here. I'll our bullet, a bullet spawn point, and our muzzle flash. Now we won't be able to shoot out our bullet at this stage, but if we set up everything correctly, we should be able to pick up a gun, and when I push the mouse button, there we go. We've got our muzzle flash when we're firing. So it's now starting to look like a real gun. So let's finish off this last part, which is to fire our bullet. So back over into Visual Studio, what we can do is start our coroutine. And I'll explain why we've done it this way in just a second. There's actually a couple of reasons. So first thing we're gonna do, yield return new wait four seconds. I'm just gonna put a figure in there so it doesn't throw an error, so we can just pick this up. We're gonna add one last variable to our inspector, which is float rate of fire. Now I know from just mucking around with this, I found this to work well, 0.2F. You can use whatever you want. And after you play around, but we're going to use this here, rate of fire. We are going to, no, we don't fire there. We finish firing. Here we start our coroutine. Firing. Now, we need this to only be firing while we are actually firing here. So we set a ball in the mouse button down and mouse button up. And the reason we've done it this way, two reasons, is with the coroutine, if we did it with every single, um, if we had it on just mouse button, it will keep firing the coroutine over and over and over and over and over again. Well, we don't, we just want the coroutine started once and then shut off. So this is why we've done it this way. Also, this is setting things up for the new input system too, because the in new input system doesn't have a button down or a mouse button down 
um, component to it. It's only on this sort of here where down and up. So this works very well in the current older style of input system and in the newer input system. So what we do here is we do while is firing. And what this is going to do is it's going to keep reiterating and it's going to do it once, wait for 0.2 seconds, do it again, 0.2 seconds until is firing is off. And what are we going to do? We're going to instantiate a bullet and fire the bullet in the direction. This is actually going to require us to do a couple more bits to our bullet, but we're going to stick that for a second. So first part of instantiating our bullet is simple. And we do need to keep a reference to the one that we create because we need it for when we actually give it a direction. So instantiate our bullet and we're going to instantiate it at the bullet spawn point dot position dot identify. And just know for the moment that if you're not doing anything special with the rotation of your instantiated object, you use this quaternion dot identify. Um, we'll go into what a quaternion and all that is in a different episode. Just know that quaternions are to do with rotation and this is what we set to keep it to its just normal standard rotation um, point when we instantiate it. And the next part is actually moving it. So same thing, bullet dot get component, rigid body, which we need to still add to our bullet. And we use velocity and it's going to equal transform dot forward because we can shoot it in the forward direction and for the moment I know this works and time dot delta time you can make this a variable if you want which you probably would depending on the firing rate you want to use but this is what I'm going to use for the moment and this here should work and this should be everything that we need to do except for going back into our player Quickly jumping into our prefab bullet, add a component rigid body, and I think just as a standing setting sh should be fine. Let me just check the material. I think I might have accidentally done something there. Oh no, that's fine. Okay. This is not showing the glow because we're in the prefab viewer. Let's test this out, shall we? So moving along, moving along, door opens, grab a gun, and we're shooting. You can just make out the bullets. So for if I'm not mistaken, they are the wrong way around. But that's fine, you can see them. One small issue, I don't know if you noticed there, but our bullets were piling up. And in another episode, we're going to clean that up and use a pulling system. Uh, and if you look above right now, you'll actually see the episode for pulling system. And in fact, we use... Actually, I think we do uh, enemy in that particular one, but we will be using a bullet system, pulling system for that to clean this up. For the moment, all you can do is create a new script called bullet. Is that prefabs? Add it to our bullet. Don't need any of that. Start another coroutine called bullet cleanup. Yield return new weight for seconds three F destroy this dot game object actually sorry not update we need that on start do we so if we just jump back into the game and go and grab our gun 
and start shooting, you'll see that the bullets are instantiating in our hierarchy, but they're being cleaned up afterwards. Again, there is a better way of doing this with a pulling system, which you can check out in the link below in the description on our pulling system. But we'll cover that in another episode. But for the moment, this will do what we need. But just before we go, I have noticed that our bullets are actually not firing in the direction that we're aiming. They are just firing straight forward. So let's quickly fix that. Jumping back into Visual Studio in our player combat script. Now, the problem that's causing that is here. We're using the transform of our player to determine the direction that we want to fire the bullets. When in fact, we should be using our spawn point because that is going to be facing the direction that we want. So if we just change that over, save it, jump back into our game one more time. There we go there, we can grab our gun and now it is firing in the correct direction. Now there is a small problem with the bullets not aligning the way we want, they're kind of facing upwards, but because we're gonna be changing that into a particle system in the next episode, that is not a big deal. We won't worry about correcting that. And that is it for this episode. Thank you once again for joining me. In the next episode, we are gonna be looking at the particle system to make the gun look a little bit better and that'll be your first introduction to the visual effects graph in unity um, we may also look at some sound effects just to give ourselves a little bit of that extra oomph to the game make sure to jump into the discord channel where i can answer any of your questions on this episode or any other unity questions that you may have also a great place to look at the challenges that we are starting to introduce into the discord channel as well Thank you again and see you in the next episode. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share to help grow our beautiful Unity community. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification button below to make sure you get to see our next video. See you shortly.